Our scripture this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought him to a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today is the day. It is the day, right? This is the day where we are hearing the organ and singing hymns and meeting at 11. It is the day where we have three services and children's church and we're live streaming. I have been so excited about this. I have had ants in my pants. <laughs> and the staff has been preparing so much for this. I mean, the last week we have been bouncing off the walls. And here you all are. We are here with bells on, right? <laughs> Amazing. Well, those are phrases that we use, right? Idioms, did you hear me? I got them right, which is a miracle. I often mess those up. But I think I said them right today. But they're idioms, right? These are phrases that are meaningless. <laughs> They don't literally mean what they're saying, right? They're not, they're not literally true. Thank you, Jesus. I do not have ants in my pants right now. I don't. And it probably would have been chaotic if the staff was actually bouncing off the walls, right? <laughs> and aside from that one, if you all had bells on, it would be a little much right now, probably. <laughs> See? Imagine that times all of you. <laughs> But you know phrases like this, right? Phrases that we just say, they're meaningless, they're not literally true, but they're just phrases we use. I bet if I asked you, you could come up with a few. I mean, here we are, the day of hymn singing. First of all, you all are probably on cloud nine, right? When we get too excited, we say, hold your horses. When someone isn't telling the truth, we say, he's full of beans. Right? But these are just phrases. Nobody out here is actually on a cloud. I don't think very many of you have actual horses to hold. And certainly you are not vessels for beans when you're not telling the truth. Right? These are just phrases that we use. They're things that we say that aren't literally true. They're just meaningless. They're part of our culture. They're just empty. Right? Kind of like saying, 
thoughts and prayers after a mass shooting, right? On Wednesday at a school full of children, at 10.20 in the morning, a mother received a text from her child. And the text said, there's a shooting. It's real. I'm scared. I love you. And the mother who received this text was full of panic and desperation for her child and left work and went immediately to the school. And we heard stories of children huddling in corners in their classrooms. I read that there were children who watched their math teacher get shot. And then they pulled his body into their classroom and they took off their own shirts, putting them in the wounds, trying to stop his bleeding. Could we call this demonic? Is this brokenness in our society so heavy and unfathomable that something like this is happening, that children are killing children? Forgive us, O oh God, that at the place where we send our sons and our daughters to learn violin and geometry and how to share, that they also take breaks for shooter drills. Is it time to repent, to turn around, to change our actions? And not just engage in those cliche phrases that are just part of what we always say, but aren't literally true, like thoughts and prayers. Is it time for change and repentance? This is what our scripture is about today from the Gospel of Mark. We've been studying the Gospels on Sunday mornings. For weeks, we've been in the Gospel of John, and you know a little bit about John. Bread of life, bread of life, bread of life. Sound familiar? Every Gospel has a flavor or a tone. And there are three that are synoptic, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, meaning they tell the synopsis of Jesus' life in different ways with their own tone and their own style. But those three synoptic Gospels agree on the basics of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. First, he was baptized in the Jordan River. Then, he was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days. And it was then, after that, that he began his public ministry, preaching. Matthew, Mark, and Luke agree on those three things. But the preaching, the public ministry, begins differently for all three, and it's sort of tone-setting for the Gospels. In the Gospel of Matthew, the first public ministry and preaching is the Sermon on the Mount. I'm sure you've heard parts of it. It spans two chapters. It's the longest sermon in the New Testament. We quote it all the time. Luke is similar. It's the Gospel on the Plain, similar to the Sermon on the Mount, very long, teaches us the Lord's Prayer, talks about the Beatitudes. It sets the tone for Luke. But Mark, which we're in now, is the shortest Gospel. It's the immediate Gospel. It's the one that gets straight to the point, and the tone setting and the sermon that's preached in Mark 1.14 is simple. It says, The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and receive the good news. This sets the tone of what the Gospel of Mark is. It's a Gospel that starts with the call of repentance, which is to turn around, which is to go in a new direction. The Gospel of Mark starts with this message preached at the beginning, and in this story that we're studying today, Jesus demonstrates it. In this story, in the seventh chapter of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is in the middle of his ministry. He's preached to the crowds, he's healed, he's done miracles and healed the broken. And now he's tired. And he goes to Tyre. 
This is a 20 mile distance from Galilee where he's been doing his ministry and it's truly going to the other side. He's going with the other people, you know, those ones. He's going to the people who believe differently than him, who act differently than him, who live differently than him, who politically lean differently than him. He's going into Tyre. Hopefully, he will be unnoticed. It says in the Gospels, he didn't want anyone to see that he was there. And so he goes because he's looking for rest, and he's looking to just take a break anonymously among the others, the Gentiles. But a woman notices him, a mother. And she is desperate and panicked for her child because something demonic is happening. And so even though she is the other, even though they are different in all ways and how they live and how they believe and how they worship and how they act and where they politically lean, she is a mother. And she comes to him and she asks for help. And then he says something that would have been expected from the Jews, from people like him, from his side. One of those phrases that people would have understood to be a cliche, to be an idiom to be a phrase that's somewhat meaningless. He says, it wouldn't be fair for me to give the food that's for the children to the dogs. It's shocking that he would say this. It's offensive. It's buying in to all of the cultural nonsense that he was a part of. And that mother, that mother says, how dare you? do more. And right there in the Gospel of Mark, he does. He repents, he turns around, he does something differently. There he was saying something that would have been cliche, would have been understood by the Jews. How can I, it wouldn't be fair to give the food for the children to the dogs. You know, that sounds a little bit like it wouldn't be fair to take away the freedoms of Americans. It wouldn't be fair to take away the guns of hardworking Americans. It sounds a little bit like hold your horses. It sounds a little bit like stop with those ants in your pants. It sounds a little bit like a cliche. And she said, no. How dare you do more? And he does. This is Jesus Christ turning around, repenting going in a new direction against everything that he would have thought was true, against his political leanings, against the crowds that were following him, against the categories that people would have been put in, us and them, because it was a mother who was panicked and desperate because something demonic was happening with the children. And he said, it's time to turn around. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And in our country, this was the 385th mass shooting in 2024. That's an average of one and a half a day. In our country, firearm death is one of the leading causes of death among children. Is something demonic going on? Is it time to take action and turn around? In our gospel reading today, it's a story. It's two stories of healing. Some stories start once upon a time. Some stories start in a land far, far away. And some healing stories start with repentance. And that is the gospel today. We are followers of Christ. May we do as he does. Amen.